Hello everyone and welcome to Programming and Access 2013, the advanced course. My name is Steve Bishop and in today's video we're going to be talking about subforms. Now subforms are a very handy way of displaying one form inside of another form. And this is most useful for when you want to display certain pieces of information to your users, but not force them to have to switch back and forth between different windows. You just kind of want to show them some information that's in one form and put it inside of your main form. This is a very easy way to kind of put a bunch of information and present it to your user in one easy to read screen, rather than like I said, have to you know, switch back and forth between several different windows. So let's go ahead and hop out here and take a look at an example of this in the Northwind database. On our home form, which is what we would call the parent form, we have these three subform objects here. We've got the active orders, we've got inventory to reorder, and we've got our uh, something called the SBF sales pivot. Now, I want to focus in on this inventory to reorder subform, or what we call sometimes the child form. So we've got this inventory to reorder subform object here. And if we open up the actual home form, let's go ahead and take a look at it. You'll see that it shows a product list, quantity available, and reorder level. Well, this information here, this, uh, this is actually another form inside of our database called inventory to reorder subform for home. And if I open this, you'll see it's the same exact layout and format that we see over here in our inventory to reorder. And just as an FYI, this form is actually currently set up as a data sheet view. That's uh, kind of what we would look at if we were looking at a table or a query. Uh, a data sheet view can also be set up on a f uh, for a form to present your data in this particular way. And if we just look at the design view, let me uh, actually close out of the home tab here for a second. If we go into the design view, we'll see that the form is actually comprised of three text boxes here. Uh, but when you actually view it in the data sheet view, it rearranges those three text boxes to actually be in this particular format, which is very handy. All right, so let's close that down here. Let's go back into the home tab, or excuse me, the home form. And this inventory to reorder subform, we're gonna go ahead and recreate. Okay, we're gonna create our own subform inside of a parent form. So let's go over here to create tab. We're gonna create a, uh, we're gonna go to the form design to open up a new form. And let's resize this a little bit to make it easier to work with. And what we're going to do is, in order to create a subform object inside of our parent form, you just have to go into the design tab here. And if you go down, you'll see there's this object called subform slash subreport. If I click on it, I can just draw a square here on my main form. And there we go. We've actually shown the area that we want our subform to show up as, uh, show up at. So I have a wizard here that pops up. I don't really like to, sh to go through the wizards with you guys because I'd rather show you how to do it manually so you can learn a bit more. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and just skip out of that wizard for now. I am going to change the label from child zero to inventory to reorder. And then I also need to rename this subform object. Right now it says child zero. Let's rename it by going to the other tab, going to the name and calling it sub. Uh, inventory to reorder and there we go so we've got our subform created with a label now we probably need to I, I need to show you how now how do we associate the form this inventory to reorder subform how do we associate that and show that inside of this subform object well first I need to close out of it here in the home form and the reason is because when you're working in design view on a form um, if you've got it open in design view already you can really only have it open once in design view so when we have this home uh, form open in design view all of the sub forms are also going to be opened up in design view so that means the inventory to reorder sub form is currently opened up in design view 
right here inside of this subform, and you can only have it opened one time. So if I tried to add it here to this subform right now, I could do that, but it won't show up very well, not while we're designing it right now. So I need to actually close this home form for right now. Now I can go to my subform here, and I'm going to go click on the data tab. And in the data tab, there's this source object property. I'm going to click on the drop down here. And you'll see that I can select from all of the forms that are in my database. I can select from all of the reports that are in my database. And I can even select from my queries in my database. But the one that we're looking for specifically is this inventory to reorder subform. So I'm going to select that. And you can see now that the information uh, that the, the design view of the inventory to reorder subform shows up inside of this subform object. So I'm going to go ahead and save this now, save this form. We're going to call it form inventory to reorder. And go ahead and just open this up in the view here. And you can see there is that inventory to reorder subform shows up inside of that box that we drew uh, for our subform object. So we can interact with this inventory to reorder subform right here within our parent window. Let's just kind of make this, spruce this up a little bit here. I don't like having on my main form the, um, the record selectors and the navigation buttons. So I'm going to get rid of those. And uh, I think that'll do it for that. Now, I do want to show you some properties on this subform object. So we've got some of the typical properties here. We've got, is the subform visible? Uh, you know, its width, its height, where it is located to, uh, to, you know, the top left corner of the parent form. We've got the border style currently set to solid. Uh, I like to change the special effects sometimes for my subforms to shadowed because it kind of gives this neat little offset look. If we look at this, you can actually see it looks like it's raised up above the parent form. And that really kind of sets that form apart. I kind of like that idea. It makes it kind of look like a window on top of a window. All right, so uh, some of the other things, you can set the, uh, the the border width. You can change the color, obviously, the padding for it. Uh, if it's anchored, which we're going to talk about anchoring in another video here. Uh, can it grow or shrink? So does this window actually grow or shrink with the data? Uh, currently, it's set to yes to grow, no for shrinking. Uh, display always, so we could uh, we could set it for print, it would only show up. Does it show up only on the screen, or does it also, if you wanted to print the screen, will it uh, will it also print? That's the print only, uh, print always, or always, let me backtrack here. Always means if you're printing it, this subform shows up, and if you want to see it on the screen, it shows up. Print only means when the user's interacting with the with the parent form, does the subform show up? Well, print only would mean no. When you're vis when you're viewing it, that pr that print only option means it's only going to show up when you print it. Screen only means it only shows up when you're looking at it, and if you try to print the form, it won't print the subform. Okay, so sorry about that. A little confusion there, but I hope that cleared it up. Now the show page header and page footer option here. If your subform this inventory to reorder subform. If it had a header and footer, you could select whether or not you want the header and footer to show up inside of your subform object. So that kind of adds a little versatility to the view, uh, and, and you could make it so that your main form, maybe you want it to open up as its own window in some other location, but when it shows up inside of this subform object, you don't want it to show the header and footer. So you could switch that over to no. As far as the data tab, we already went over the source object where you can select different forms, reports, and queries. Uh, the link master fields and child fields, we're going to get into that in the next video. The filter on empty master, that's also something we're going to talk about in the next video. Then there's enabled, so is the subform enabled? If yes, then obviously you know show the information and allow the user to interact with it. Locked, of course, means um, you know, whether or not the user can, again, interact with it, but it's just not going to be grayed out. It's just going to be locked in the user and won't be able to do anything with it. The event tab, you'll see that there are only two events that can be triggered on this uh, subform object. 
enter and exit. Well, if you're going to enter it, essentially what that means is, let's say I've got this uh, text box here that the user is currently typing into. Well, as soon as the user types into there and then decides to select something inside of this subform object, that triggers the on enter event. Now, when the user selects something outside of that subform, you know, so they were in the subform, now they're clicking on something outside of the subform, that would actually trigger the on exit event. Okay, so those are really the only two events that you can do on the subform. Everything else inside of your form itself, so you can see if I look at the text box inside of it, I have all of the events for that text box. So you're not really disrupting what's on that inventory to reorder subform. You know, all those same events will still be triggered if the user interacts with those things. It's just the mere act of going in and out of the subform itself, which tells whether or not one of these two things are going to be triggered. Then lastly, we have the other tab where you can change the name of the subform, obviously. And this is good for when you uh, have to deal with VBA in any way. So maybe you need to make certain subforms visible or invisible. Uh, having it named appropriately definitely helps with the VBA code. Tab indexing, you know, the being able to tab between different controls, uh, you know, that's something obviously very helpful to do. You can, is it a stop where you can tab to? Yes. Which tab index is it? It's the first one, you know, zero base. Uh, status bar text, what shows up here when the uh, subform is selected, when you've selected this? Uh, do you have some text that shows up right here? And then the tags are just some special way of storing some information about uh, a particular object. So there you go. That is the subform object. Sometimes it's called a subreport object because you can do, like I said, subforms, subreports, subqueries. Uh, you know, you can put queries inside of this object. So it's a very useful, handy tool to show a window inside of another window. All right, in the next video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about probably the most useful feature of subforms. And if I go ahead and save this here, and open up the home form. We have this link between the active orders subform and the employee that is selected from the combo box. So when we actually select different employees, we get a different list of active orders. So I'm gonna show you in the next video how that works, how you link different objects between the parent form and the subform to actually filter the data of the subform based upon the user selection of the parent form.